Hi, everybody. My name is Krista Savagian, and I serve as the Horace Mann Principal here in Indiana Area School District. And if you're watching our video, it's most likely because um, one of your amazing children come here and you're just looking for some more clarity around what health and safety actually looks like during um, the 2020-2021 school year. So the whole intention of this video is number one, to just begin communicating with you. Our Board of Education just voted on our health and safety plan as a district and that we will be coming back to school as long as we have certain terms of agreement in place as of July 31st when it was all voted on. So what we're doing here in this video is to give you just a precursor to what Horace Man may look like for your children when they come back in and how we can work with the health and safety protocols and also teach these amazing children as they are here. So if you have more questions after today, we will be holding a town meeting. I believe the date is August 10th, and the link will be up at our main page in Indiana Area School District, where you can come with any additional questions that you may have. Also, our health and safety plan is available to you on the main website, and we'll be looking at specific pages in the health and safety plan if you have more questions. <clears throat> excuse me, to begin, we're going to talk about four main areas, masks, social distancing in a very social world that our children want to be in, um, lunch and recesses, and arrivals and drop-offs and the health screenings that we will go through and hopefully make as comfortable as possible in such an odd time of living. So we are going to talk through that. And if you have more questions and you would like more of a private setting to address those questions, the blessing of Horace Mann is we are kept as a small community for that reason. You can call me directly or email me and I'll get back to you. And we will just talk about maybe student specific questions as they come up. So when we're looking at masks within Horace Mann and district wide, the great rule of thumb is anytime that the students are six feet apart and they're not in motion, they do not have to wear a mask. Now, schools aren't necessarily crafted for social distancing, as you know, because you were all in a school at some point. But we do live in like an 1856-ish building here, and it's large, and we have only about 220 students at maximum capacity of um, our population. And if you choose to send your children back here, then that means that our classes will probably not meet the six feet requirement distance, but we will meet the three feet. So students will be wearing masks if they are anything less than six feet apart. And the other rule of thumb is, is if they are in motion, we put our mask on. So for example, if I'm eating dinner at Luigi's with my son and one of us needs to use the restroom, we slip our mask on, we walk through um, the other tables to get to the restroom. And when we come back and sit down with the family, then we put the masks back on or back off. So again, whenever we're in motion, we wear our masks. And that's what we are going to um, teach through our positive behavior interventions and supports, that that's what our new level of responsibility and self-care and compassion look like here in school is just to take care of each other and remember, um, just like our new way of living during a time like this. So as individuals need it too, we will talk about this in a minute, individuals a lot like learning, maybe I know this, I learn differently in literacy than anyone else. I, I have to hear it as long as I can also read it. And then I'm really interpreting what I'm getting in. Well, safety is the same way. Students need different things at different times. So we'll be giving individualized mask, mask breaks also for our students because our students may need different things at different times. Also, we will have the scheduled mask breaks during the day. So we have different buffers in our schedule that we're able to spread around more minutes in our day and also still maximize on our learning. But one thing I do know is I've learned this over and over again in our triangle of needs. If our health and safety isn't met first and our social emotional needs aren't met, it's very difficult to go to the next levels and actually learn. So the first thing that we're all going to do is to ensure the safety and health of our students paired with social emotional support as we come back together because humans thrive on social connections um, throughout their lives in their own ways. So that's what we're going to focus on first and foremost 
And the next layer is academics, number one, because we want to be here and we want to learn. That's what school is all about. So just to let you know, we're going to spend lots of time really working through our social emotional framework and helping students feel supported as they're making different transitions into this time with us. So as we go forward into looking at our mask breaks, again, we have big spaces in this space. So we have big classrooms that currently aren't used in a normal day-to-day -day life, but now we're cleaning them out and we can use them as break areas, such as our cafe break time, our mask break time, uh, and maybe indoor recess break time if there's a torrential downpour or a lot of snow during the winter time if we're in school. So those are the types of things we're going to look at at Horace Mann. All of the extra spaces to go and have our breaks, almost like a break room, and also to engage in socializing in a safe way. We also have wide hallways that we're going to be minimizing our transitions within the school so that we can contain um, the spread. So if we are moving around, it will be with a purpose. It will be because it's necessary. Otherwise, we're going to just stay settled and plan in movement breaks so that our students can be in school and they can learn. And same with our teachers. So our teachers can stay in school and teach. So we're going to look at those safety um, precautions as well, just to contain the spread. Also, we are going to plan our mass breaks as frequently as needed. Now, we're going to start maybe with a couple um, doses splashed into our schedule, but maybe students need more at the beginning because it's hotter in Horace Man, Or maybe they need less because they're actually thriving because it's maybe cooler summer. We don't know any of that yet. So what we're going to do is make sure that we splash a few in the morning, a few in the afternoon, and then students can take them as needed without, without question. So that's how our time together will look with our mask breaks. As we go into our social distancing, it's, it's a little tricky talking about social distancing because we are social beings and to distance ourselves is becoming um, the safe requirement so that we can stay well and our families can stay well and our community stays well. So when we look at social distancing, one of the things that our classroom, we're going to just jump to the second bullet real quick because cafe um, will look a little bit like recess. Whenever we look at the classroom, our teachers are going to set up the desks so that we're approximately able to be three feet apart, wear our face masks, and also be able to learn and coordinate and talking to each other and expressing um, ourselves still, even with the new requirements. So we um, had our meeting and we are going to begin looking at how we can arrange rooms so that students can learn effectively, but also so we can connect in our new way of living. The second piece of that is that all students within the space, if we cannot be six feet apart, will be wearing the face mask, but they will still be social distanced with their desks and their learning spaces approximately three plus feet apart and nothing less. So that's something that they're working through. The other piece is that in the cafe, we seat about 25 students safely six feet distance, but what we wanna focus on at the cafeteria time is giving students a complete break from wearing their masks and staying safe. So we are opening up cafe lounges around the building, which would mean that the huge classrooms can now serve as eating spaces. And we are fortunate to have loosened our personnel to the point that we have people supervising all those spaces and people that our students are familiar with. So it might be a special area teacher. It might be me. It might be our school counselor. It might be uh, Mrs. Baylog. It might be Mrs. Clark. We are going to use all hands on deck and make sure that our students have a system that they can work within so they can thrive. I'm a creature of habit, and I like to know that I can look forward to my lunch break take my mask off, and also socialize with some people. So that's our plan for the CAF. And some people will be able to sit in the cafeteria, and some people will be going to a classroom. And then we will switch around after a set amount of time, just so that we can maximize on cleaning and also keep the students safe and let them get in a routine. If it's nice outside, our building is created almost like it was meant for this, and maybe it was if I looked into the history. We have a back door from the CAF into their recess playground and a large concrete space where we can lay down our blankets or we can go to the grassy pad in the front with supervision and have lunch outside. 
How cool is that just to get a dose of fresh air, a ray of light from the sun, and also be able to talk to our friends? So maybe we're actually loosening up the old restraints and creating an even more fun atmosphere for students. That's our goal, is to find the positive mindset, even in a time where we have to be so safe with our wellness. So we do plan to have our outdoor seating area available, and we're looking into the different modifications that we're going to make in order to do that. Also at the bus stop, um, we obviously don't have a lot of control about where kids are standing at the bus stop, but when they come in, students will be sitting on the buses together with their face masks on. If a student for some reason has a condition, which is noted on page five of the health and safety plan of the school district, that they're not wearing a mask, we highly recommend that they get alternate transportation to school. And what that means is they arrange for a bus ride or you can call the school and we can help you arrange something. Because what we want to do is to ensure your child's safety and the safety of others on that space. And if we are riding to school together and we're sitting so closely in terms of seats, sitting two at a seat, we do require the face mask rule. Now, upon arrival um, and drop-offs, we also require face masks as, as you're walking into school because what we're doing is, we're going to talk about this in just a moment, during car pull-ups, car um, drop-offs, walkers coming in, bus riders coming in, we do have a temperature screening that we're going to go through and also a health and safety screening. So those are the things that um, are requirements as you come into the school premises and something that we will be looking for with our personnel out on the front steps and on the side of the school. During cafe and lunch times, our goal is to sit six feet apart so that our students can be maskless for a part of their day. Same with recess time. So if we open up our spaces, we know that we can fit up to 12 students in our classrooms at any given time, six feet apart. We also know that we can fit approximately 25 students in a cafeteria if the weather doesn't permit them to sit outside or if they choose not to sit outside because we're gonna give them the choice to do that. And we also know that students need supervision and they will get it. The blessing of having a large lunch space is there are adults that can walk around with 100 students in a lunch space. Now we just need a little bit more adult supervision during so many breakout rooms. And that's what we have worked on with our central administration since the start of knowing we may go back to school together. Our cafe schedule will pretty much stay the same. It may lengthen a little bit because we have um, small groups of students walking down to buy their lunches and then moving to their spaces. The good news is our schedule permits that and we can lengthen and stretch out our lunch times as we need to. We've never lived this through with our students yet. So what we're going to do is be flexible. So we're working out with our cafeteria um, plan managers from central office, scheduling so we can permit flexibility and responsiveness to what our students need. Just to keep in mind, as students are in motion, we are requiring masks just to reduce the spread and keep everyone safe in a time like this. So we will have personnel down at the lunch lines and we'll just look for them to be six feet apart, standing in line, moving forward, a lot like we're waiting at a restaurant for our food or to be seated if, if it's a popular day. So that's what is happening. And then we are going to tier students out to go get their lunch. If students plan to pack their lunches, they can stay in their room, wash and sanitize their hands before they eat. As the students that go to get their lunch, wash and sanitize their hands before they eat. And they come back, they eat, and then we wash and sanitize our hands again. The number one thing is that we're keeping our safety protocols at the forefront of what we're doing because that's a new way for us to feel that we're taking care of, that people care about us, that we care about ourselves. So we're going to continue to teach that over and over and over again. As we look at the classroom and we look at um, where we're going with that, I spoke about a few things, but I'd like to talk about the manipulatives, which is our second bullet here on this slideshow here as we are talking. If you are thinking about learning tools and what my student needs to go to school and thrive and be able to participate, some of the things that we've done here is when we spend our normal budget dollars, it might be on something that we normally would use on a non-coronavirus year. 
what we did is we housed some money aside so that we now can use it for what our students need. And that's really what money is about. It's about investing in the areas of need so our students can thrive and our school system can thrive. So what our secretary has done is she put in um, a lot of budget items where we can start personalizing school manipulatives and school needs for our students. Now, if your child loves certain crayons and colored pencils and pencils, glue sticks, by all means, go for it. What we're going to do is just give them a space to house it. We're going to have their name on it. They get their own box now, and that box is only theirs. Where we used to share things before, it's not that we're not sharing. It's just that we're going to teach a new way of sharing, that this time we're going to share wellness. And what that means is I'll help you gain access to a new resource, but I may not give you my pencil today. And we're going to teach them those new pieces because we're not used to living like that. We're used to giving of our own things to people. We still can. We can give of our hearts, but we can do it by maybe coaching up a student to ask for that from a teacher. Or I bet that there are some in the school space. Let's go ask. Let me help you. So we're going to really teach people how to be friends to each other and help them become even more empowered to be resourceful and helpful to show their friends how to do that. So we're also working on our one-to-one -one Chromebooks that we can gain those back so that we can give them out and students have their Chromebook to work with for the entire duration of the year. That way we're only cleaning and sanitizing toward the one student's needs versus Krista uses it today, Christy uses it tomorrow, Shelly uses it the next day, and then we have all these people touching things. So our goal is to really reduce the spread by keeping things in-house and with the individuals even more so during the day. And then as we look at bringing in personal belongings, I'm going to challenge the teachers and even our parents, what is the most important thing to bring? Because we're going to reduce the use of public spaces like lockers and we are going to keep personal belongings in personal spaces now. So if we have a big book bag, it might clutter the learning space. Do we need the big binders? Do we need all of the papers? Probably not. Do we need to handle homework the same way as we always have? Probably not. So we're going to look at some new ways that we don't have to bring all this stuff to school and deal with it. That we can just bring a little bit. It's like we're simplifying our lives so that we can maximize on instruction and safety and health. So we'll look at those things and then we'll communicate with you. Also, if you can see that your child doesn't need a big giant book bag and can maybe bring in one of those straw um, drawstring bags that they get during sporting events and things, I empower you to do so because one of the things you'll see is the spots are only so big. So a big book bag might feel almost like an overstuffed hard pillow that has to sit in that space all day. As we look at arrival and drop-offs, this one is really important for parents because I'm sure you're wondering how this looks. The good news is, if you're familiar with Horace Mann, it's pretty much the same way that you're pulling up all the time. If you're not familiar with this um, almost like high school look, which this, I guess, was a high school, you'll be pulling up on Fifth Street, and what you're going to see is personnel just all lined up on the sidewalk, and you usually do anyway. If you're familiar with our school space, um, I'm the principal that started last year. So I'm out front. Uh, Brenda Obarto, our school counselor, is out front in the mornings. Mary Jo Shiro is out front. She's one of our school assistant um, to teachers, like an instructional aide. And we're also front loading with more teachers next year. And here's why. As you pull up, we're asking for students to stay in the car because whenever you do check them in the morning, we understand that when you go through your health and safety checks with your own kids, Sometimes behaviors of like sickness manifest on the ride to school because a child has gotten up long enough and they're moving around and they're starting to recognize, hey, I'm not feeling too good. At least I work like that. So it's not that you didn't check well enough. It's that students may start showing symptoms during the car ride to school. So what we're going to do is have a couple of staff members come over to your car and we're going to do a temperature check. Excuse me. <clears throat> And as you do, we do the temperature check, we will notice that if it's over the 100 degree mark right away, we're going to ask for a school nurse to just come on and consult with us. So we'll ask you to pull ahead and then we'll bring our next cars through. If there are any other um, couple of symptoms that are noted in our health and safety plan, again, our school nurse will help consult with us. And then we'll suggest that maybe the student stays home that day and then they're symptom free for the, for the amount of time that we're suggesting them to be in our school plan. 
So as we go forward with um, our health and safety screenings, you'll line up on your car rider side because a lot of you will be car riders this year and we'll do our symptom checking at that time with our personnel. If you're a walker, you'll come in and we'll have you safely social distanced and we'll be checking you on the line as you're coming in. If for some reason you're coming up like positive that you're not feeling well, what we are going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is escort you into the school space in a private, helpful way. And we have a coronavirus um, safety room where you can sit and you can be in safety and you can also be cared for around you. It's right next to, next to Mrs. Lucart's office, which is our school nurse, and Mrs. Pierce, which is our head RN nurse, and it's in Mrs. Balog's old copy room. So you're going to know where this is and you're going to have lots of support around you to help you through that. When you get picked up, you'll get to go out a back door and exit, which is even better. It's like this beautiful, like hidden entrances of this old school space that we live in. We will escort you out the back way. And that way you don't even have to be involved with any of the students at all if you're feeling sick. And you also get to maintain your privacy. If you're coming in off the buses, we're going to keep you on the buses until we screen you to come off. We're going to do one bus at a time so that we can ensure that people can get to their classrooms safely and at a distance from each other, just so you can get housed and comfortable and we can reduce the spread if there is someone that's sick on site and we didn't realize that. So what we're going to do, you can grab your breakfast, head upstairs, go inside as you normally do, and we will show you how to do that. We will have personnel lined up in our back lot to help you walk in to help you know what to do, especially if you're a new incoming fourth grader. And then we will help you go upstairs to your new classroom. So we talked a little bit about what our screening drop-off processes look like. If you have any extra questions about the health and safety tips of what it means to be screened as like a positive person that could be sick, we will take you through that in the health and safety plan on the website. If you have additional questions about that, you can call me and we can talk through it together and talk about the specifics of what your child may need in our school system and in our school building. As far as recess goes, I just wanted to assure you again that we absolutely care about students playing. This is probably the most sacred time of their day, aside from lunch. And the reason for that is because we want to get kids socially aware again, that they can talk to each other, that they can create partnerships and connections again. So what we're going to do is stagger our recess time so that we have less students out at one time and they have more room to play without bumping into somebody because we want them to take their masks off and breathe and talk and maybe just take a walk around the premise. And so we will have a lot of supervision on hand during our recess times, because again, we want students to be able to be a little bit freer at this time, be distanced and safe. They're going to be outside in this setting that I'm describing, but also we're going to utilize our lawn area. We're going to utilize our back um, lot area if we can create a game there. And we're also working with our health and PE teacher and our awesome teachers that what are some new tactics we can use to stay safe, reduce the spread, and also have fun. Because we want to remember being a kid is having fun and being an adult, we want to have fun. So let's maximize on that. We may have to rope off pieces of our playground equipment just to ensure the safety while students are out there. But we want kids to play and we understand that they need to let loose. So that is our goal for outdoor recess. Indoor recess time, we're going to use those breakout rooms again. So if students are playing, they are at a distance, but they're playing. Um, if they're in motion, we do ask that they wear their masks indoors. But if they can stay stationary or be in motion in their spots, six feet apart, we're going to encourage them to do that. That looks like it's the end of our talk today. I will tell you that my last talk was 36 minutes, so I re-recorded for you. <laughs> I have a lot to share with you. I'm a parent of two students that I'm letting come back. I know we get free choice to let kids come back or have them learn online. If you decided to bring your students back, I'd like you to hear this. I feel like I don't really know what it's going to be like, and I work here, and I've been a part of the planning, and I have learned about all the steps that came and went during this process. 
And I still feel a little bit like, what's going to happen? So if I feel that way, I can't imagine how you feel. And I'm here to tell you that I want to listen. I want to help you plan for that. And if you need anything, I'm here to listen. I'm here to help you plan with it. Because what is more precious than these beautiful students you're sending to us? That's why we're here. So if you have any questions or uncertainty and you feel like, you know, the town meeting may not be the way for me to do that, call me. My um, phone number here is 724-463-8560. And if you leave a message, it comes straight to my email anyway, so I can call you back. If you would like to email me, you can email me at any time and I will get back to you. Please do not hesitate to ask the questions that are on your mind. I'm sending you safety, the light, and I can't wait to see your children and you again. Have a great day.